Because lightning always seeks the easiest route to the ground, you can actually trigger lightning. And scientists do this. They have a little rocket, or they'll set up a little rocket, maybe just a rocket a few feet long, and has a little tiny wire hooked to it that's in this big coil on the ground. And the rocket shoots up into the cloud, and it's trailing this wire behind it. And when the rocket gets up into the cloud, it has provided now a conducting path for the lightning to flow. And it will trigger a lightning strike. And the lightning doesn't have this erratic path. It comes straight down the wire. And they can, they can use this to study lightning. They can determine exactly when and where it's going to strike and have their in instruments ready to measure the voltage and other things. Understanding how lightning works also allows us to make what's called a lightning rod. And a lightning rod is simply a metal pole. You put a metal pole on the corner of your house, sticking straight up. And that causes a very large concentration of charge on the pole. So lightning becomes very likely to strike that pole. And you might think, that's bad. You don't want lightning to strike your house. No, you don't. But you run a metal cable from this pole. And this cable runs down along the side of your house and into the ground, several feet into the ground. And because this is a good conductor, and because it's the most pointy thing on the roof of your house, if lightning strikes your house, that's where it's going to strike. And this metal cable provides a path for the lightning, and it just goes into the ground and disperses. And it leaves your house unharmed. So a lightning rod doesn't deter lightning at all. It actually attracts lightning, but it provides a path for it to move through without doing any damage to anything or anybody. The lightning rod was invented by Benjamin Franklin. And Benjamin Franklin's known for other experiments with static electricity too, like flying the kite in the storm, for example. But he invented the lightning rod. Now, just a side note here, it's good to be educated. It's good to understand this stuff. And here's a practical reason that it's good to be educated. After lightning rods were invented, some people had a scam operation going. They would go around to people's houses and knock on the door and ask them when was the last time they had their lightning rod tuned. And the people would scratch their heads and say, well, I, I don't know. I've, we, we had this thing put in a few years ago. I don't, I don't think we've ever had anyone tune it. And the people would say, oh, my goodness. And they'd start describing accidents that had happened and lightning strikes and storms and the danger involved. And they'd offer to tune the lightning rod for $50. And they'd climb up on the roof and pull out some instruments and act like they're doing some work and make some adjustments, turn some screws, tighten some things with some pliers, come back down, collect some money, and head on to the next house. If you understand how a lightning rod works, you understand that there's no tuning involved. It's just a metal pole that sits there. It doesn't need any adjustments or anything or any particular maintenance. It just sits there and provides a path for the lightning to, f to uh, flow to the ground. Just being there is all that needs to happen. It doesn't need any, any uh, service of any kind. So knowing that can help keep you from being scammed in that way. I actually heard of some people doing this, scamming people about lightning rod tuning in Atlanta just this past year. So this still goes on. So just a, another practical reason for understanding this stuff. Now a couple of comments about the boat here. Sailboats are a particularly dangerous place to be in thunderstorms. Not only is there lots of wind in a thunderstorm and big waves that can capsize the boat, but they're particularly prone to lightning. That's because a sailboat mast is often made of aluminum, which is a very good conductor. And even if it's made of wood, it's still a better conductor than the air around it. So the lightning, the mast itself, provides a good path for lightning to flow to the ground. And the boat is typically the only thing protruding up from otherwise a relatively flat sea, this large area of open sea. And that's the one pointy thing sticking up. So sailboats are particularly prone to being struck by lightning in a storm. Now a large sailboat might be grounded. You might have a cable that runs down the mast and through the boat and then along the bottom of the boat. And that provides a path for, for the lightning to discharge into the water. And that makes it a lot safer as long as you're not hanging on to the metal rigging when lightning strikes.